Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Ganner, and I am here with Brian Schuster. We are working on the ultimate metaverse project, which is Otherverse. We're going to talk to you today about the plans over the next couple of years of what the direction that the project is heading in and what we see happening over the next few years with this project. We're super excited about it. Um, this is going to be an absolute transformative project. So just so you guys know, Brian didn't say, hey, let me jump into the metaverse when Facebook changed their name to Meta. He's actually been in this space for nearly 20 years working on it and building this out. Brian, can you real quick just kind of touch on your your uh, relationship with the internet? I got started on the internet back before it was a commercial medium. That means back when it was government and educational institutions, universities, this type of thing. I looked at the internet. I very quickly realized this has such huge potential to be commercialized. Um, so I looped in a buddy of mine from NASA JPL. Um, I was a cartoonist at the time among multiple other businesses that I ran. I had a, I put together a website for my comic. We developed an advertising format, which became known as banner ads. Um, we developed the first banner tracking systems. I mean, back before there was really uh, the technology to do it. And that was my introduction to the internet. So Brian, it would be safe to say that you are one of the true innovators of the internet, right? We wouldn't have the internet that we have today if it wasn't for advertising, right? It has been a major driver in where we're at right now with the internet. Everybody online touches every day multiple innovations that I either developed um, and patented or developed and didn't patent. And that spans the entire range from advertising, commercialization, data analysis and tracking, search engine technology, social media technology, all of the stuff that everybody is familiar with. I laid the foundation for that back in the early mid 90s. Um, and you can just look at the patent portfolio that we have. I like to look at patents as proof of what we developed as opposed to just a monetization tool. So uh, you can look back at those patents. You can see where we were back uh, at the dawn of the internet. All right. So fundamentally important stuff that you've put together in the early development of the internet. And then when it came around to about a little into the early 2000s, you and your partner sat down and said, we need to figure out what the next version, you wanted to get ahead of it, like you had in, in the first phase and the second phase. And what did that lead you to? What was your, what was your, what, what conclusion did you come to on where the next, the final phase, we're going to call this the final phase of the internet. Right. Um, so, you know, the history with the Internet, we realized, of course, Web 1 was one way communication and then Web 2 subsumed Web 1 and Web 1 became part of Web 2. And we looked at what is going to be the final iteration of the Internet. It's the holodeck. It's artificial intelligence. And, um, you know, we took a few months and really planned that out. And we said this is going to subsume all of the other internet components, mobile, web to social media, all of this, all into one. And we were calling it the virtual world web. It's later been renamed the metaverse. Um, we named our company Otherverse. And that was where we saw all of these technologies ultimately merging into the final master iteration of the internet. And I think it, it would be safe to say that you were early in the fact that blockchain, this idea of Web3, the technology. So the, you know, that whole piece was not put together yet, right? So you had the basis of the of the metaverse, the you know, otherverse, but not the other pieces. And now I see that's all starting to meld together, including AI, right? AI is a key part to this. Right. Well, back in the early version of our metaverse, you can look back, we were thinking about AI, I actually wrote the sci-fi uh, novel, The Minerva Virus, about it, but you're correct, uh, we were before blockchain, we were really before all of this decentralized Web3 stuff, so we introduced the really the very first pseudo-token, Raise, uh, this was a commerce vehicle, we've done tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of uh, transaction volume in Rays as a virtual currency. And we got sort of stopped out with all of the regulation, the banking regulations and all of this. The, the plan with Rays was to become a sort of Bitcoin. We developed the technologies to create 
a raised standard, like a gold standard, a digital type of gold standard, but we couldn't implement uh, because it was too centralized. So of course now the opportunity to decentralize is here and we're, we're, we're looking to uh, <laughs> reconstruct this in Web3 correctly and properly with uh, full decentralization. Over the last over 18 years, you've been experiencing the metaverse, right? The virtual World Wide Web. And now you're getting ready to launch the next version of that. Can you talk a little bit about that version? And then we're going to get back to the decentralization side and the tokenization of that economy. And we'll come back to the Web3, you know, decentralized side. But I, I want people to understand where we're at right now with this, this newest phase of Otherverse. So I have always looked at the Otherverse as a very long-term project, a multi-decade project, and it has been. The very first versions that we launched were proof of concept, uh, then develop on the proof of concept, tear down what we built, rebuild it more efficiently so that we could prove the next concepts. We have franchised out to 17 different countries. I've had more than 50 million users, live users that are really interacting with whom we can have discussions and, and optimizations and really figure out what drives the metaverse, what makes it successful, what do people actually want, how do you build community? All of that we didn't need modern technology for. I mean, we needed the most modern at the time. But over the last 18 years, we have developed all of the protocols, systems, technologies, underpinning, you know, the patents on all of this stuff, the business methods, how do you build community? All of that uh, information experience for my me and my team has gone into this next version, this ultimate version, which is, you know, as you say, uh, uh, more decentralized, but designed to be a fully capable, fully immersive version of the web, um, leveraging all of the history and all of the knowledge and all of the uh, um, uh, proof of concept stuff that we learned. Well, I think for people that are looking at this and watching this, you're looking to say, hey, do I want to get involved in a project? Do I want to be part of that project? And I think there is the key. There's a lot of people out there doing stuff in metaverses. They're so-called metaverses. But there's very few, and possibly the only one, is Otherverse that has the experience that is actually interactive, right? So anytime for people out there that have started a business, you don't really know what your business interaction is until you start having those business interactions. And at that point, that's when you figure out the process that you're going to go through, right? You don't invent a process and try to shove people into it. And, and I think that's the great part about Otherverse. It has the experience. It's already learned what everyone else has to take the next few years to learn. And of course, by the time they learn it, years. then we're a few years further down the road because Many we continue years. to build community. In fact, it's not just time, it's also generations of technology. So what we learned, um, and this is really our fourth generation, I like to call it our third generation because it's our third production generation. We had a, a generation in between there that, you know, we learned a, a huge amount, but never ended up succeeding in production. And what we've learned in each subsequent generation was that we we had painted ourselves into a corner. In, in a way where the technology that we had developed couldn't expand and be ultimately be used by the users in a, you know, a fully uh, dynamic way. And each time we had to start over and rebuild with the foundation, you know, you can't, you can't build a house without having the foundation solid or the house is going to collapse. And that's what all of these first generation metaverses that I see are doing. They, they are building with problem foundations. We're on our fourth generation. And this time, you know, we we have so much experience that we know exactly what we're doing. I, I want to, you know, just paraphrase Steve Jobs because I watched a, a really neat uh, couple of minute uh, segment from him. And the gist of the segment is a great idea is important, but the iteration of that idea over time you, you know, the idea always changes because you discover things as you as you try to implement and you say, oh, in theory, this was great. But in practice, it needs to go this way. And then it improves and improves. And that's what we've done for 18 years. We're prepared to launch now an absolute game changer. I mean, nobody has ever seen anything like this. It is going to blow everybody's mind in ways that I can't even I can't even articulate. 
uh, at this point. So uh, really the culmination of all of that work. So Brian, whenever I'm ready to get in business with somebody, I look at their commitment level and what they're doing. So first of all, the time-wise, 18 years, three versions, really this is the fourth version of it. But also you want to look at the investment of the person that's involved with it. How has Otherverse been funded over the last 18 years up until the last 12 or 18 months when when you started to bring in? So who funded this thing? Right. So I have had very many successful, very successful exits in my career, as you can imagine, having started uh, advertising on the Internet. I um, brought up the one of the first and most successful free web hosting companies, which I sold in 1999. I sold portfolios of patents. And I've turned all of that money. I flipped all of that into Metaverse. So I have funded it entirely um, myself up until uh, just a very short time ago where we started to open this up to uh, third parties um, to come in and uh, participate. Because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I don't want to, I, I want this company to be owned by everybody. I want the token to be owned by everybody. I want the stocks to be owned by everybody, right? I mean, this is going to be a, a, a humanistic project where uh, it elevates the human race. So it can't be owned really by by one person. But my commitment has been I put everything in my entire life, uh, all of my successes, all of my tears uh, into this. Let's get back to the Web3 decentralization tokenization, because that's what we're here about, right? We're getting ready to have a TGE event in the next uh, you know, short period of time. We haven't set the exact date yet, but we're getting close to that. And that will bring forward the tokenization of the economy of Otherverse. Can, and you touched a little bit on the classic system, on that economy. Where do you see over the next two, three, five, ten 10 years, the economy of the new version of Otherverse that's launching? And how the token plays in that. So this is an enormous area. Right from the beginning, I recognize that a metaverse currency is absolutely a prerequisite to operate operationally having a successful metaverse. An internet currency that has seamless, low friction, ease of use, decentralization, all of these points is an absolute essential requirement for a utility token. But let me start talking to some specifics because people may not really grasp what it is I'm saying in the abstract. So anytime people get together, you need to have a unit of account. You need to have a medium of exchange so that they can transact with each other so that uh, goods and services can be exchanged. And in a metaverse, where we're going over the next few years, really in the next few months, is everything that you do in the real world, everything that you need any kind of money for in the real world, you need a utility token, you need a, a, a medium of exchange in a metaverse. So specifics as, as examples, because there are so many, it's just, you know, I mean, the one that immediately comes to mind is weddings. In a metaverse, people meet other people, they get married. We've done more than 7,000 weddings already in, a, in a, you know, our proof of concept metaverses, right? And in, to get married in a metaverse, of course, it doesn't cost you the same that it would cost you to get married in the real world. You're not renting a physical venue, you're renting a digital venue. Somebody has built that digital venue. Somebody customizes it for you. Somebody builds the wedding dress, they build the tuxedo, they build the bridesmaids dresses. They, you have the wedding photographers, you have the videographers, right? Um, the wedding planners, all of these people. So this becomes an enormous cottage industry just for weddings, matchmaking, dating, and this is all transactional. You need you need a currency for that. You need a token for that. Users will create uh, clothing, skins, tattoos, uh, uh, jewelry, NFTs, FNFTs, all which are functional inside uh, the metaverse in order to wear these clothes, in order to you know, remunerate, to compensate the creators, these you, you need to be able to buy these. They rent stores, uh, they buy advertising, uh, they get placement in the catalogs, uh, people shop. Um, and of course, this is, you know, anybody who's played video games has this experience. There's all kinds of things, you know, you're gonna go to a, a concert, you get a ticket. I can't even begin to describe the 
vibrancy of an economy inside metaverse. It's really unlike anything that you see on the web. So you need a token that, and of course, you know, tokens have value. Um, so the goods have value, the services have value, and it makes the uh, the economy spin. And of course, the token that we're doing, right, is there's a set number, there's a max supply out there that's going to be there. So it's not something that's, uh, you know, uh, inflationary, right? I mean, just to, just to comment on that a little bit, because there, there's more, there's even more to it. Because the token is used and because there's a finite supply, what we have found in managing the economy and what happens is as the money moves around, as the token moves around, the company earns revenue in the form of the token. So not only is there a finite supply, there is a permanent, um, I, I, I want to call it deflationary force that pulls these tokens out of the economy and back into the company wallets. And then the company can, uh, and, and through that mechanism, you know, the value of the token can continue to increase as the economy grows. And then we can reward people. I suspect you're going to want to talk about that, but we can reward Absolutely. people with those tokens that we've earned for participation in the economy and that everybody benefits at every level. And that's from staking and also from activity, right? I don't need to have tokens to get to. I can just come in, participate in it. As a matter of fact, in our tokenomics, we have a, a, a large portion of the supply that is put aside for activities to encourage people to get involved in, in being that economy. You know, and that's a, from the initial supply, but yes. it is also replenished. It, it's replenished. And that's the beauty. That's the that's beauty. The, that is absolutely perfect. Now let's let's talk about so we've we've got the other verse, we've got the metaverse, we've got the foundation. Now the base metaverse. So so we're really going to dig in here because all the other ones I've looked at are metaverses, right? They're building a metaverse. Otherverse is a metaverse, but it's the how can we say it? It's the core of just the proof of concept, I guess, or just a world that they can go in. Otherverse is so much more. And Brian, I'm just going to turn it over to you. You can explain to him what Otherverse really is from the browser to the whole ecosystem of who knows, maybe a million metaverses at some point. Right. Or or hundreds of millions. Um, so you're you're exactly right. I look back at my history and um, you know, when I got introduced to the web, uh, the first browser uh was, you know, basically coming out. Um, and everything was a standalone at the time. You know, you had separate internets even. Um, you know, you had CompuServe and America Online. And these things didn't really talk. You had all of these different applications. You couldn't get your e email in a browser. I mean, there wasn't a browser, right? Um, then browser comes along and bam, all of this snaps together. You have domain names. You have websites. And um, it becomes easy to click around because you have HTML. You, you know, just everything is hyperlinked. What we've done here is replicate the best of internet meets the best of video games, meets the best of AI, meets the best of virtual reality and mobile, right? All in one. So of course, in order to do this, you know, in, in the software business, we say we eat our own dog food, right? We're, we, we're, we create the tools so that anybody can build a metaverse. We create the protocol so anybody can get a domain on the metaverse. Any metaverse can be searchable with our search engine. Um, you have a web, you have a metaverse browser, the Xeon browser, that allows users easily to landmark locations, click around, create their own metaverse, or you know, become a service provider, a community of people that will build metaverse for you. The idea being we are starting with our own metaverse. We're using our own tools. We're using our own protocols and making sure that everything works and that it's so engaging that our metaverse will be a preeminent destination at the outset. People can rent, uh, buy, uh, you know, land, uh, stores, catalog listings. We test the marketplace, all of these pieces. And then we start to release the tools to the public and you can look at our timeline and see where these tools become public and um, where people can register a domain name with us and build their own metaverse. We call it a sovereign. So internet of games where I can build a mini game in my metaverse, you build a mini game in your metaverse and players can acquire some asset in your game. Uh, they could say, okay, well now in order to upgrade the asset, I need to go to this game and do this quest 
then come back and my asset is upgraded. And so you have an internet of interconnected. I mean, this can be hundreds of thousands of mini games that all connect to create a game like we've never experienced before. And all of it with their own rules, all of it with their own permission systems. And uh, uh, this is really, not to go too far into the weeds, but this is really where a lot of our experience comes in. You can't bring uh, an asset from one metaverse across the, uh, what we call an access control layer into another metaverse unless there's a permission or unless there's a lack of uh, 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 a ban banning. Um, so, you know, I can't bring a lightsaber into a Dungeons and Dragons world unless, you know, maybe it converts into a sword. Right. Across the boundary. Right. When I when I when I think about this and look at this with what you were just saying, what popped in my hot mind is, oh, wait a minute. The Uthex token is what's going to drive. So whether I build a, my own sovereign or I don't, if I build one, I'm going to use the Uthex token to purchase all the items, all the technology, all the software in order to build my metaverse. And then I'm when I when I'm it, if I decide to use a metaverse when I go in there. I'm going to use the Uthex token to purchase these items in that. So that's the driving, that's the economy side of tying all this together. And of course, this is being built on a public blockchain. And so they will be publicly available for them to be in the marketplaces and stuff like that. However, we've looked at this and said, wait a minute, other people are going to want to build. There could be somebody who already has a token launch. They already have a metaverse up and running. They look at the technology of Otherverse and say, you know what, we want to build an Otherverse, but we want to use our own token. So we've made the decision, right, to build our own layer one. Next year, this will be launching. And then at that point, the Uthex token will be moved onto our layer one. And then other people will be able to come along, build dApps, build applications, build on that chain. Can you kind of, I mean, I covered a lot of it, but can you talk <laughs> about that a little bit? Well, we, we don't want to be exclusionary to anybody, right? So we want to be able to facilitate third-party token transactions and make it as seamless as it is using the Uthex token within this ecosystem. Um, but at the same time, one thing that you didn't touch on is where projects can come in, um, even with their own token, and within that metaverse, the, those projects can, can accept, of course, for commerce, their own token. Approved tokens can ultimately not everything can go on the roadmap, <laughs> um, uh, but approved tokens um, and approved NFT projects, for example, can go through our swap system uh, when we when we release our our wallet and you know the the in world wallet. So you know it could easily be swapped if you happen to need you know token X Y Z for a particular purchase in a particular metaverse that's not on Uthex. You could swap it, but ultimately there are there are system wide platform-wide uh, requirements for the Uthex token. It's really a, you know, I like to say best of, be, I mean, our, our tagline is best of all worlds, right? We're, we're, we're always trying to pull the best of. So if you've got a token, if you've got a project, that can come in and it will work with our tech stack and, and we can integrate um, or it can be integrated. And then, you know, obviously the, the overarching is Uthex, our own layer one, our, our own nodes uh, that, that will be sold. Uh, so uh, so and that's, and that's a bridge, right? So we'll, yeah. Uthex chain will be in 2025, but towards the end of 2024, uh, we'll be launching nodes, right? And these nodes in the interim will begin to process transactions, maybe talk a little bit about those nodes, and then eventually those would become the validators on the chain. We've got we've got two functions for nodes. Uh, one is just what you described, validators on the chain, uh, transaction processing, and of course in the tokenomics, we've got the node rewards uh, for that. And then there's also, because it's metaverse, there's so much data. Um, there's so much um, uh, bandwidth requirement for downloads and, you know, I mean, just like loading a web page, the video's got to come from somewhere. So the nodes can also be set up to serve content locally to users that are close by. And in this way, it improves, it optimizes the speed at which the metaverse can function, that it can, you know, you don't want to be sitting there waiting for something to load. Um, and uh, so node operators will be able to um, gain value, uh, gain, you know, remuneration from servicing content, uh, uh, bandwidth, and then validating, of course, 
and uh, processing transactions. So Brian, um, we've talked about a lot of stuff here. Um, we want we didn't want to get too long on this. So where I'd like to wrap this up in is there's a lot of people talking about metaverses and they're going to come someday in the future. Right now, this newest version of it, what stage are we in? And what does the next 12 months look like? Right now, we are in late stage of closed beta. We've got a couple of more updates, which are really major updates. Um, and then when we open our beta, we're going to see a massive rush of users because the metaverse will service a lot of needs. There's uh, concerts, meetups, podcasts, um, new kinds of influencers that come up, film screenings, karaoke, comedy, dating. I mean, just the dating alone is going to bring in, you know, the matchmaking uh, services and the, the social function of metaverse really is the sort of initial um, easy use case. Uh, beyond, you know, as I say, conventions um, as, a, as a phenomenal use case. These things will drive in tens of millions of users immediately. Um, and then as we as we broaden out with, the, you know, these these additional tools and the, you know, the expansion, it's really, you know, it harkens back to, I think about when I was trying to raise capital for my very first internet company, uh, the very first advertising company. And I would hear, you know, uh, why would people advertise on, on the internet? You know, uh, they could just buy an ad in the phone book. Right. Say, right. You don't understand. The internet is not a phone book. The internet is ah, so much more. And that's what we have with metaverse. If you really think about what could be done in a video game and, you know, what could be done in the holodeck, what could be done in, you know, the matrix, this is, this is what we're introducing. So where are we now? Um, this year, it's going to really be rolling out these um, phenomenal use cases that are going to drive in tens of millions of people. And then over the next couple of years, it's really the full push for uh, complete decentralization, the full push for uh, sovereign uh, systems um, and governance and um, uh, expansion into every area of, of, of life where it's, you know, you're, you're selling real estate, you, you're doing it in a metaverse, um, your open houses in the metaverse, you're buying, you know, you, you've got a replica of your home, you're buying furniture, you're putting it in your virtual home first, you're buying clothes, you have a virtual closet with all of your real world closet. And it's this um, uh, real world, this tokenization of real world assets, um, uh, because your entire life inventory is part of your avatar in metaverse and in the real world. It's mixed reality, augmented reality, you know, all, all of these pieces all combined um, so that, you know, we all get together, we watch the game. It doesn't matter um, that my friends are anywhere in the world. And it doesn't matter that the game, you know, we're not live at the game. It feels like we are, it looks like we are, all new kinds of entertainment, new kinds of, I mean, you know, and merger of artificial intelligence that's also coming later this year. Um, so all of these pieces, I mean, we're, we are multi years in development that's about to be released um, or that's in the process of being released, I should say. We are releasing it right now. Um, so that's, uh, that's where we are. Well, thank you, Brian, for sharing with us. Look, if you're looking for, there's a lot of projects in the blockchain web three space. Um, but you, you know, when you start to look and you want to say, Hey, I, I want to be involved in something that has true utility, something that has a future, bright future. Um, Citibank GPS put out a report that the metaverse will be an eight to $13 trillion marketplace by 2030. Otherverse will be a leader in that space if not the dominant player in that space. So if, so please do your research, do your homework, look for one of our AMAs that are coming up. Um, go out and, and, and really think about this. Uh, we look forward to you becoming part of the Otherverse family through the token or through some other mechanism, being part of that world and spending some time with us. We wanna thank you for your time and watching this video. Brian, thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you in Otherverse. Thank you, everybody.